Hey everyone! Today we're going to be sewing the mini Alice. I am clearly super obsessed with this pattern. I want to make like a million more. They're so fun. She has a riveted option, a quilted option, and a solid option. I've got the quilted and the riveted options shown here. Here's a little quilted. And this one has a uh, vinyl strap. And then for the riveted version, I decided to do studs. Can you see the studs? And I went with the chain and the um, side connectors. I call them knockers because they look like door knockers to me. Um, I think they're just called strap connectors. This is the one we'll be sewing today. It also has the studded option. Um, the turn, it's got a turn lock closure here. That's probably not fully glued, so ignore that. Um, this is just like the big Alice except it's empty inside. So feel free to add some card slots if you wish or a slip pocket for today. I'm just gonna show you how it is written. This little cutie is so much fun. I wore this black one to an expo the other day and it was just wonderful. Um, very easy to keep everything in and grab it right out of there. My chain here is 47 inches. It's from New Moxie. So it's a crossbody for me, but it might not be for everyone. It might be a shoulder strap. Hopefully you can see this on my side here. It's super cute. It's pretty fast, pretty easy. I hope you have a ton of fun sewing this and let me know if you have any questions and please make sure to tag me in any pictures you post because I love these so much. Go ahead and gather all your supplies, fuse it and make the markings as recommended in the pattern. I'm going to be doing the riveted version except I'm gonna use Chicago screws. So I have my zipper panels and my lock closures, my lining panels, and my main panel. I'm gonna use spikes, so I only wanna do one side, but you wanna make markings based on your pattern um, and then punch out all your holes. I use a Japanese hole punch like this and make my punch a hole right in my marks. I do the same thing um, to add Persevite, like this. All right, I've got a couple studs here that I just got off of Amazon. Um, it looks like they're like 3 eighths of an inch long. And I've got a set of Stanley screwdrivers. I'm gonna take a screw and put it through the back and put my stud on the front and then screw it on. And I've got one stud on. And I'll repeat this until all my holes are filled. You can do the same thing with rivets or rhinestones, or um, you can use the quilting option she gives you as well, but I wanted to try this um, studded version. Now that your rivets or Chicago screws or quilting is done, go ahead and grab your um, two exteriors and start bundling things together with your exterior main panel zipper panels and your zipper panel linings and your 16 inch zipper. I will not be using sewn connectors, so I don't need the D-rings or the D-ring connectors. And that's pack one. Pack two is just your main panel linings. 
Pack three will be your bottom and purse feet that I have already installed, your two zipper pulls, and if you're using them like I am, your um, strap connectors or bridge connectors, I'll probably call them your knockers like a hundred times. Then for pack four, you'll need all four of your lock connectors and your um, lock. Last pack is your strap and the hardware for the strap, but I will be using a 47 inch purse chain instead. So I have that here. Go ahead and make center marks on your zipper panel lining, your zipper panel exterior, and even your zipper. Then you can go ahead and separate your zipper and match your markings up to one of your lining pieces. Then we're gonna baste that on. Go ahead and repeat with the other one. This is the lining side of the zipper panel. Your zipper teeth are right side up. Now that those are basted on, go ahead and match uh, the right side of your zipper panel to the right side of your exterior zipper panel matching up those center marks that you made then we're going to sew this together you will have an about an inch on each side of zipper hanging out and you do want to connect it all the way down on the exterior use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance I like to sew with my basted side facing up. Repeat for the next one. Go ahead and fold these wrong sides together now. I like to press the one side first and then the other. You repeat for the other one and then we'll top stitch. I like to use a five and a half for my top stitch length. Now that our zipper panels are done, go ahead and take your lining and clip it to the zipper teeth. Cause we just wanna work with the exterior side right now. And this is such a narrow piece, you don't wanna grab the lining. So go ahead and do that with the other one as well and grab your main panels. Using the center marks we made earlier, match the two centers up to your zipper panel and your main panel right sides together and clip it. You can staple if you want like Alexis suggests but you don't have to use the stapler if you don't want to. I just come back to the top corner and match that up and then ease it in. So you kind of just pull in nicely into position. Perfect. So start on the other side. Match up those corners. And just ease that in as well. All right, I'm going to sew with my exterior facing up uh, using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to try to keep my camera right here, but I don't, I don't make any promises.
I ended up a little short, but that's okay. If you have used staples, remove your staples now and notch your seam allowance all the way around. Go ahead and repeat this process for the other exterior piece, then go back to the machine for top stitching. This can be a little tricky, but you want to fold that seam towards the main panel. And then we're going to top stitch all the way down, making sure we catch that seam, but not the lining or the zipper. Go ahead and top stitch with your desired stitch length. Uh, you'll see me check to make sure I have my seams pressed down multiple times throughout. I suggest you try this as well. Go ahead and repeat for the other one. Grab your lining panels and fold it in half to find the center and put a clip. Do the same thing on the other one. Like we did before, we're gonna match up our center markings on the lining side and uh, sew this on. So keep your um, exterior out of the way. I've got it folded back. My center marked, and then we'll ease it in and sew around. All right, with the exterior wrong side facing up at you, I'm gonna stitch around using my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you keep that zipper out of the way and don't sew your lining if it folded up underneath it or something like that. Repeat for the other side. If you use staples to put your lining in, go ahead and take those out now. Then go ahead and grab your base. If you haven't already, install your feet. Using the markings you made earlier, match up your two center points, right sides together. And clip the base on. Then we will sew from one corner of our box we drew on to the other corner of the box that we drew on at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. At the corner where we stop stitching, we're going to lift that up and cut directly underneath it up to the stitches, but not through the stitches on both sides. Okay, so we have a, two slits on the main panel. Flop your base down and fold your bottom edges of your main panel up out of the way right now. Okay, go ahead and fold your base back up, keeping your seam allowance pressed away from the main panel Fold this back down. Make sure you leave long tails at the beginning and the end and uh, top stitch down. You want to stop about 3 8 of an inch before the end again. Flip your uh, exterior over and pull on those threads to get that loop to pop up and pull your stitch to the back. We'll tie, we'll double knot these, cut it, and um, you can burn it or apply some fray check. Go ahead and repeat this process to attach the other lining, sorry, the other exterior to the bottom. Once that's complete, you should have something that looks like this. Now go ahead and take your two exteriors and put them right sides together and clip down the side. You can staple here if you would rather. 
all the way down, including or unfold that folded edge now. Then we'll repeat on the other side and head to the machine. Make sure your lining is pulled out of the way. You don't want to catch this when you're sewing. And sew it closed on the sides, all the way up and down. So I've gone ahead and trimmed my sides and made markings as indicated in the pattern. Now my strap connectors are a little different. They only have one screw hole and there is no washer. So pretty much I'm gonna follow what Alexis says and use the little piece of Decaville um, Heavy or Peltex and I'm gonna use this as my marking. So you want to open up your side here so it's flat. Find your marking and we're gonna punch through here but we don't wanna punch our seam because that's gonna make our bag weak. You wanna punch on either side. So because I only have one, I'm gonna do one punch as close to the seam as I can get it over here on the front panel. And then when I go to the other side, on my same marking over here, I'll make my punch on the back side. So one's gonna be on my front panel and one's gonna be on the back panel. That's just to distribute the weight a little bit more evenly. I'll install it just like I did with the purse fee and the rivets sorry just like I did with the Chicago screws and the purse fee um, if my screws are too long because they do look like they might be pretty hefty I might put another piece of foam behind it all right let me show you why I'm using an extra piece of foam so you can tell too can you see my gap right here between the end of my hardware and like the post? This side has the foam, the extra layer. See how much thinner that gap is? So I've got my Decaville Heavy still, and then I put that foam, just in case you need it. Not all of your, your hardware will require this. It's just if you need it. All right, now you have some kind of connectors added. You've either used strap connectors, bridge connectors, or you've used a D-ring connector. If you don't have one of those, you need to add it now. So go ahead and come to the bottom of your exterior and we're gonna box it. So all, that do all you're doing is pushing your side down, matching up those sides, that side seam to the bottom. That should just like automatically fold down on the end for you. Make sure that's happening. Go ahead and repeat this process on the other side and then we'll head to the machine. Go ahead and push your bag kind of flat. You're gonna crumple it a bit here. It's all right. And then you can sew this side seam or this bottom seam really easily. Repeat on the other side. Go ahead and sew a second line of stitching if you need more stability for that. I did not, um, but I know a lot of people would like to. And then trim your seam allowance. Then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing on the lining side. We're gonna grab those two lining pieces and put them right sides together and match the sides. We're gonna sew the sides up at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, being careful not to catch the zipper. We're going to sew this at the 3 8 of an inch seam. I'm gonna start at the top of my lining since that's the most narrow spot. It'll be the hardest to get to, I think. Make sure all of your lining stays out of the way. And then go ahead and repeat on the other side. Okay, our sides are trimmed, so we're gonna come to the bottom, match up those, the bottom corners, and then we're gonna sew about one inch worth of the bottom. Then the same deal as before, we're gonna box these bottoms. 
Just pull those two corners out and match them up and match up those seams. I like to nest my seams, so push the seam one way on the bottom and the opposite way on the top. Then you can clip that, repeat for the other side, and head to the machine. One thing I read recently with these bottom seams is to help it lay more flat, make sure you push the bottom seam to the same direction when you nest your other side seam. So they're going both the same direction. This won't matter so much for the lining, but for like an exterior, if you're boxing in the future, um, make sure you try that little tip. It helps it keep it flat. All right, stitch, stitch, stitch. Three eighths of an inch seam. Let's go ahead and admire our handiwork for a minute and turn this bag right side out. Make sure this pulls out all the way. You'll have raw edges at the top. We're going to take this bottom before I tuck it in. See how it like naturally folds because of that seam, that couple in, that inch seam we made earlier. I'm gonna clip that together just for a second. Then I'm gonna iron it. Now that I've ironed it, I've got a nice crisp seam down here. I'm gonna fold this back a little bit and grab some glue. I'm gonna try this glue here. I have no idea if it's gonna work, but my other glue is like gone, so you can just seam this together. But I'm gonna try gluing it. I wanna get my glue really close to that folded edge, but I don't want it to seep over the folded edge. So be careful. Might have one spot there that might end up seeping. Yep. Rub it in. <laughs> okay, then we will make sure everything's folded back in nice. Squish it. And I'm going to let it sit with some clips for a little bit while we move on to the next section. Okay, let's work on these um, raw edges here. We're going to take the zipper panel, turn it inward and get a clip and clip it together. Then go ahead and do this on the other zipper panel as well. Make sure those um, lining that lining isn't pinched incorrectly when you fold that in. Okay, then we will grab our zipper. For this bag, it really helps me to lay it on the side like this. Put the rounded edge of your zipper pull on on the left side and then onto the right slide your zipper pull on i'm going to go all the way to the other side and fold these edges in now as well Now I'll keep sliding my zipper up. My panels are pretty different right here. They should line up or get them really close to lining up. Um, the lock cover will cover these, so I'm not too terribly worried about it, but you don't want it to be too bad. Make sure you have no bubbles in your zipper. And here is your zipper right now. We can go ahead and trim the ends of the panel so it's flush. Okay. 
And if you want, you can burn the ends of your zipper carefully, which is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and grab all four lock connectors. And for the purpose of this video, I have gone ahead and marked around my edge. Um, I usually eyeball it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut wide notches. all the way around, not going past that line that I drew. Now you'll go ahead and repeat that for all four connectors. All right, all four of my connectors are done. We'll grab some double-sided tape that's quarter inch, put it an eighth of an inch away from the stabilizer edge all the way around. Repeat for all four connectors. Go ahead and remove the double-sided tape backing. Then go ahead and take the leather, vinyl, whatever on the straight edges and fold it down to your tape on all four sides. And then go in for that last bit and fold it down and around. You should get a pretty good curve this way. Okay, from the outside, this is what it looks like. I'll fix that piece right there. And we're gonna top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Before I top stitch, I'm gonna take some non serrated pliers. These are key fob pliers. And I'm gonna smash those ends just because it's a little thick there with this um, faux suede. So just smashing it all down so it adheres to the double-sided tape and squishes flat for easier top stitching. Now let's go sew. Because I use a zipper foot and not a walking foot, I'm going to use a hump jumper so I can have more um, traction on this other side so I can stitch better to help with in the thick spots. So I'm going to use a five and a half and I'm going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to leave a long tail at the beginning and end of my stitching. right in the hole I left off on and I'm gonna leave a long tail. Just like we did before, we're gonna pull our tails side, the back side. We're gonna pull those tails to the back. And this is one connector. We need to do it three more times and I'll meet you back here. While I was finishing my last one and tying it off, I remembered we were supposed to tie it off and bring the strings to the center and stick them down with some double-sided tape. So, oops. And the other two, I guess, I'll just throw some fray check on the ends of them and hope for the best. Okay, so I found the ones that I wanted to be my top and my bottom, my prettiest ones. I've gone ahead and marked uh, the center for the connector I've taken my washer for my connector and laid it out and drawn my lines. I need to stab my holes through and then install my washer and connector. This is going to be the prong side of your connector. 
your lock. I don't know why I keep calling it a connector. And then add your washer. And I'm gonna fold my edges or my prongs inward. So it locks it down nice and tight. And then we'll move on to the other one. For this part, you might think that you line up your tabs and they're gonna fit in there. Go ahead and fold them in that quarter of an inch like Alexis suggests, just because you wanna make sure that you have a very uh, good area to add your glue to. And if your sides stick out too far, they won't squish down far enough and you'll get a big bulky area. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and fold those edges in uh, at the top here and squish it into the center by like a quarter of an inch. I don't know. I'm kind of just eyeballing it here. Making sure everything's still pretty flat. I'm going to go ahead and staple the top. You will not see this staple later. Make your mark as indicated in the pattern. Find which side of the this that you want to be the top. Or the, well, I guess it's the bottom rather. So you fold it in and then you fold it on top and then you're going to flip it shut. So which side do you want it to do that on? I've decided which side of my bag I want my hand to go on. So I'm going to line up the top of my bag here with that line I drew just a few minutes ago. Make sure it's centered. And then clip that together. Make sure you get some kind of super heavy duty glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue. Um, I've also used super glue. They both work great so far. Uh, then we're gonna apply the glue around the stitched side of the uh, plain one. This will take me a minute, but we're just going to do it right along those threads all the way around. Tr don't get it outside and don't put too much on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do like a little swirl, swivel of glue right there too, just for fun. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see my glue layer here. See, it's pretty thin, it goes all the way around and we've got it in the center. So then we're just going to come over to the other side, that same side I mean, and uh, clip it together. You're definitely going to need some strong clips here and you want to get them pretty much everywhere. Um, I prefer clamps for this step versus clips, so I'm going to grab those. Okay, again, I've gone ahead and found the center of my pretty uh, connector. I'm going to trace my hole out centered. And my screw holes. Okay, then we'll go ahead and punch these out. Okay, you need a cutting board your piece and a hammer. I've got this set of dies, there we go. So I'm gonna find one that matches that inside I cut out, or traced out rather. Sometimes you might have to use two, one block and hit it twice or something. I think this one's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna have to hit it twice. just a tiny bit bigger than the area I traced out. So then I'll just take it and hit it with the hammer. And then I'll do it with the hammer one more time since it's not wide enough. 
Now you want to get your other one and lay it right on top, this one right on top of it and punch that same marking out. I'm going to also punch um, my holes with my Japanese hole punch. Okay, again, we're going to make our second or our mark on the uh, connector and then we're going to line it up with the top edge just like we did before. Keep it centered. It's great having that center marking on there because I can line up my seam with the center and know I'll have some accuracy. We're going to glue the lock, the other lock connector now. Then again, line this up. While I'm waiting for that a little bit, we'll go ahead and open your zippers. And if you had clips inside while it was waiting to dry, you cannot see mine. You can go ahead and pull those off. Check to make sure your seam glued. If it didn't, re-glue it or stitch it. Ooh, I had a nice seam that time. The last time I tried this, I did not do very well. All right, so you can kind of see in there. Maybe. There we go. And I'll just install the other lock just like I did everything else. I did a not a good job lining my cut area up. So we'll work with that. You want your pretty side on the outside like this. I gotta cut the center of mine out, but then you'll put your washer side. Make sure it's also the pretty side out. Right side and um, together and then you'll put your screws in again I've got to cut mine so I can't finish it just yet but you can move on to your strap I'm going to use a chain so I do not have a strap this time you did it 